Joining us live from uh, Bengaluru this evening is Sharat Bache Gowda. He's our MLA from the Congress Party. Uh, Sharat ji, welcome. Thank you very much for your time and taking our questions here on India Today. The External Affairs Ministry, Mr. Bache Gowda, has said that they've issued a, a show cause notice now for cancellation of Prajwal Revana's passport. How would you react to that? Do, would you say that action is finally being taken 29 days after he left the country? First of all, I think what I would like to say is that uh, this is a victory for our uh, Chief Minister and it shows the kind of proactive approach which we are taking towards this investigation. It also shows the lax attitude which BJP has taken towards trying to bring an accused back into the country. It's taken 28 days and till the Chief Minister of Karnataka has intervened hmm. and written to a, a letter to the Ministry of External Affairs to bring the accused back into the country. So I think the big question over here is who is being protected at whose behest is that person being protected and why has it taken 29 whole days for this procedure and for this kind of you know, uh, process to be initiated? So the first letter that was written by Mr. Siddharamaya, and we did a, we did a show yesterday, Mr. Bachegada, where we uh, spoke specifically about the long rope that you are referring to, raising the questions about why this member of parliament has been allowed to be uh, you know, uh, elusive of the law for so long, 29 days and counting. Uh, letter number one was written on March the 1st. It was written to the prime minister. Letter number two was written on the 21st. It was written to uh, the external affairs ministry. Uh, Dr. Jay Shankar, the external affairs ministry says, we follow the law. We we got the letter only on the 21st and therefore we have responded after that. How would you re react to that? Even though we do know that two letters have been written. Uh, uh, I would say it's a very convenient answer for BJ to give. Whenever they want, they play fast and easy with the rules. And when it suits them, when it's one of their coalition partners, you see them being stickler for rules, abiding by the rules, delaying procedures. Whereas if it's someone in the opposition who's being targeted, hmm. right, you see people being raided at night, midnights, without warrants. So there are two sets of rules. One set of rules which applies to the opposition party and another set of rules which applies to your coalition partners and to the people who you're friendly with and people who you've you know, got warm with. You can see that even after all of these incidents have happened, in Karnataka, the MLC election which is taking place right now yeah. is also happening in a BJP-JDS coalition. You see that there's a tainted MP who's got these kind of grave accusations against him. And even the family has disowned the behavior which he's shown and haven't condoned it. And as yet, BJP continue to, you know, cohort with them, be with these people mm. and show a warm alliance. So really, BJP has got to do a lot of introspection and ask itself, what all is it willing to do for the sake of power? Is this the level that you're going to stoop down to? Are you going to protect people who are accused of such grave crimes? Almost 400 women are involved in this incident. You know, there's got to be some kind of responsibility and there's got to be some kind of action taken in a very quick and uh, urgent manner. Mr. Bachekara, I agree with you that the onus is on the central government and that's the reason why we raised that question on our show as well yesterday. Uh, my next question to you would be, uh, you know, why is there so much mystery over where Prajwal Revanna is? You know, we got a, uh, a, an initial comment after he'd left saying it was a pre-planned private visit. Uh, is there any intelligence at the state level about what's happening with him? Is he being actively protected there? There, there is a lack of clarity even on which particular city he is. I, I'm sure that the state uh, police department and the SIT, which has been constituted to look into this matter, hmm. has a lot of information about a lot of matters which we cannot publicly or openly discuss about. I'm sure there's a lot of confidential information available as to the whereabouts of Prajwal Revana and what's happening and how these things have happened, which cannot be publicly disclosed. But all said and done, yeah. when it involves bringing an Indian national citizen who is abroad in a different country. As you know, there are rules which relate to extradition. There are rules which relate to even countries where Correct. we have extradition yeah. possible, where the central government has to take a proactive role in all of these elements, right? The state government can only constitute an SIT and see where and where his whereabouts are, mm. how these things unfolded, who are the people who were accused, who are the people who have conspired, who are the people who have been, you know, uh, maybe it has been raped, yeah. maybe it has been a misbehavior. So, this is what the state intelligence department can do in its team. But the rest of the work is with the central government and how seriously it takes this issue. Yeah. Because we've seen that the Prime Minister always talks about Beti Bachao, Beti Padao and all these fancy things. But when it comes down to the ground reality of what hmm. happens, we've always seen 
that the central government and the BJP party has stood on the side of the aggressor almost every single time and all these fancy words about protecting women are something which is just for, you know, for talk and for public consumption. When it comes down to action, the central government and BJP has always stood with the aggressor hmm. and has not stood on behalf of women and we are seeing this play out one more time. This is a standard procedure of the BJP party. You know, while Very saying, uh, you know, while agreeing that the onus is 100% on the central government this time, my final question to you, Mr. Bachegada, would be, uh, you know, how, how would you answer those who say that the Prajwal Revanna issue is not a new issue, it's been known for many years, possibly to a time from before he was an MP, uh, you know, you've been in the BJP in the past as well, and that this is not strictly a BJP versus Congress issue, Absolutely. that people have known about this in the past and there appears to be a, a, a sense of liability on you know successive administrations allowing this guy to get away with what he was doing how would you respond to that I, I would not go so far as to say that this was publicly known as public knowledge since many years mm. what I would say is what do we have on record and what do we go by in the month of yeah. December a letter was written by one of the BJP functionaries to the national head accusing this particular member of parliament of Correct. whatever heinous acts have been purportedly been done by him since he's an accused we can only say purportedly been done by him yeah so this is the only record which we have so when there are things on record and the party fails to act hmm. i think we've got to take responsibility they've got to take responsibility for the actions hushed murmurs whispers possibly have been heard but there has been nothing on record yeah and when we found something on record was in the month of december one, one clarity, I think, which BJP has got to give to everybody was, mm. what was the reason for them to say Prajwal Revana wasn't an ideal candidate? And what was it which changed their mind eventually? Yeah. Right? Yeah. If there's some logic behind you saying Prajwal Revana was not the ideal candidate for Hassan, mm. possibly you had information about these kind of incidents which have happened. Possibly right. you have information about these kinds of accusations which have been made. Possibly one or two people have come up to you. But you, for the sake of power, for the thirst of power, have decided to make your bed with the devil and now it seems for all intents and purposes that you're protecting this particular individual who's got these grave accusations against him and we will be following this story until justice is served to all of those victims and we'll be following the case very very closely Sharad Bachegoda thanks very much good to have you on the show thanks for being with me